Let me read to you a passage from the sixth chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, verses 12 to 19. It's the Gospel for Tuesday of the 23rd week in ordinary time. St. Luke writes, Jesus departed to the mountain to pray, and he spent the whole night in prayer to God. When day came, he called his disciples to himself, and from them he chose twelve whom he also named Apostles, Simon, whom he named Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon, who was called a zealot, and Judas, the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. And he came down with them and stood on a stretch of level ground, a great crowd of his disciples and a large number of the people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And even those who were tormented by unclean spirits were cured. Everyone in the crowd sought to touch him because power came forth from him and healed them all. That's from Luke chapter 6 verses 12 to 19. What does it speak to us of? Well, it speaks to us of our common calling to be disciples. What do I mean? Well, our Gospel scene today is situated in the context of several disputes with the religious leaders. Heading, healings of the afflicted, Christ teaching in towns, teaching in houses and synagogues, and the special call of various of his disciples such as Simon, James and John. All of this we read in chapters 5 and 6. The summons to Levi, Matthew, is specifically mentioned in chapter 5, followed by the feast in Levi's house, attended by many publicans and sinners, as the Pharisees called them. Christ was calling certain individuals, and others were gathering around him and were becoming disciples, and there were crowds following and in attendance. In our passage today, Luke refers to these groups. There are a great crowd of his disciples and a large number of people. So the disciples are of a considerable number, a multitude of them. These are in great attendance on Jesus, greater than the crowds, and they have chosen to learn from him. They are drawn to his person and teaching and they manifest various levels of commitment to him. We read elsewhere in the Gospels that Jesus sent 72 out ahead of him in pairs to prepare people for his coming by their preaching. We read in the Gospel of St. John that many disciples abandoned our Lord precisely over his teaching. It was his teaching on the Eucharist that led to their walkout. So there were many disciples in these different levels of commitment but others were faithful. For instance, we read in the letters of St. Paul that 500 of the brethren witnessed the risen Jesus on one occasion. They were disciples who had been faithful to him, though doubtlessly to varying degrees and in different ways. Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea were among the rulers of the Jews, but secretly. Martha, Mary and Lazarus, all from the one family, were disciples and dear friends of our Lord though not, it seems, actively engaged with him in his mission. Matthias had been a disciple of our Lord from the beginning, and he was chosen to replace Judas as one of the twelve. So Christ had many disciples, and apart from them there was the crowd that followed along. Well now, we ought to ask ourselves, in which group are we? A new stage in our Lord's work had now been reached. The crowds were flocking to him, and that stage would wax and wane. There were many disciples, and several had been personally summoned by our Lord to follow him. And this they did, though some refused. One instance of a refusal was the rich young man. He came to our Lord with his question about how to get to heaven. After their initial dialogue, our Lord looked on him and loved him. He then invited him to leave all and to follow him. But he refused 
and he went off home sad. There may have been others, but many were following our Lord. So our Lord now moves to begin the decisive work of building his church, which would be the bearer and the beginning of the kingdom. The foundation stones had to be selected and laid. New patriarchs had to be gathered around him to share his friendship and his life and to be the basis of the new chosen people, the kingdom. So serious was this that he spent the whole night in prayer to God. We do not read of this process happening in any other call. For instance, several passages, passages before our text of today, our Lord goes out of the house, catches sight of Levi and calls him to follow him. It is a simple invitation and Levi immediately responds. It is the same with Simon, James and John. We are not told if, say, Simon the Zealot, Judas the son of James and Judas Iscariot were among the disciples because of our Lord's personal invitation to them or whether it was due to their own decision to have him for their master. Whatever be the personal path of this or that disciple within the concourse of his disciples, Christ now makes a supremely formal call to some of them. Of course there is never a mistake with Christ. He formally selects certain of them to be members of the Twelve. Imagine his hand falling on Judas. There was no mistake. Judas had the calling to be an Apostle of Christ, one of the Twelve, a great saint. He had been led by the grace of God through his youth to the point of his meeting with Jesus Christ. Christ knew and loved him personally and selected him above numerous others. What an honour! What a unique trust to be one of the very twelve. Some have taught that ultimately our destiny is determined. I think this is maintained in order to preserve the doctrine of God's sovereignty. How could God be sovereign if, contrary to his will, someone were to be damned? But no, Judas was destined by God to be a great saint. That was the divine plan. Christ deliberately chose him to be one of the twelve. What promise he must have had, with, of course, his faults too. But how badly he turned out. He was an unspeakably grave disappointment to our Lord. Each one of us is called, just as Simon Peter, Levi and Judas were called. Let us live up to our God-given promise and not make the Holy Spirit sad.